My absolute least favorite thing to hear a behavior specialist say as they come in to observe a student in my classroom is, have you given them choices? Hard stop, they're five. They don't need choices for everything. <laughs> if you have heard those words and been equally as frustrated, stick around, this is the video for you. I will share how you can give your students acceptable choices when dealing with some behavior and expectations in your classroom. Hi, I'm Amy Murray from Teaching Exceptional Kinders, and I'm so glad you're here. If you have a moment, please like and subscribe down below. That lets YouTube know that other teachers will find this video helpful as well. So let's chat a little bit about choices. Now, I understand that giving kids choices can help improve behavior, but you can't always give choices. It's not feasible to have 20 plus children in your classroom and say, Susie, do you want A, B, C, or D? And Johnny, oh, would you like E, F, or G? Like, it's just not a feasible thing. But there are some ways that you can give everyone choices without going crazy. One of those places is at the carpet when you're setting your expectations for how to sit and behave at the carpet, okay? This is an important time in kindergarten. You're going to be reading them stories. You're going to be teaching lessons. You're going to be doing different interactive activities and all of that at your carpet space. And you need students to know that it's accept what is acceptable and not acceptable behavior choices there at the carpet. And one of those things, the easiest ways to give everyone a choice is how to sit at the carpet. Bear with me, there are more ways than just crisscross applesauce. And there's actually a lot of reasons that you should give them more choices than just crisscross applesauce, but we'll talk about that in a second. So in my classroom, we had five different ways that kids could sit at the carpet. You don't need to give five, you could do two or three, but giving them choices helps them to feel empowered to know that they're doing something that they want to do on the carpet. So our five choices of sitting on the carpet were peak or mountaintop, okay, where they hug their little legs, and let's see who's hiding behind them, pirate, where they just hold one leg, right, like a one-legged pirate. Then we have pineapple, sitting straight and tall like a pineapple with their legs tucked underneath. And then we have pretzel or your traditional crisscross applesauce, right, that's a lot. Pretzel's much simpler. And then we have puzzle where your legs sort of slide inside of each other like a puzzle. Some people call this a mermaid sit. Here's the problem. A lot of your boys or male students and some girl students don't want to be mermaids. And so calling it puzzle gives them more of a um, option, right? Because if you call it a mermaid and they don't want to be a mermaid, that's out from the start. So those are the five options that we had for sitting in the classroom. And I had these up on like my whiteboard with magnets and I would just point and say, pick away, sit. If it's somebody's laying on the ground, that happens, right? Somebody's standing, somebody's in somebody else's space, like pick one of the ways to sit. And you can see there's one poster with all of them back there. But if you only wanted to do three, let's say peak is a good one. Um, puzzle's a good one, and so is pretzel. These are my favorite three, if you're only gonna do three. And here's why this is not the only acceptable way to sit. I have had students legitimately with medical needs and reasons that they cannot sit this way. Okay, so if everybody else in the class is expected to sit this way except for Johnny because Johnny can't bend his legs that way, he physically can't do it, that really singles him out. But if you give everybody choices that Johnny can do, it's he's no longer singled out because everybody may sit like him. There is more way, there are more ways to sit than just crisscross applesauce. And there's a lot of reasons that it's good to give kids choices. It gives them ownership. And then when the behavior specialist comes in and says, did you give them a choice of where to sit on the carpet? Well, we do have five choices or whatever of how to sit. So those options are there. Using these real life pictures also helps because it can show kids exactly what you're looking for uh, when they are sitting. 
a word of caution, the one thing that I noticed when I started to give kids ways, choices of how to sit, we always used to say crisscross applesauce and spoons in the bowl, putting their hands in their lap. So you do want to encourage them to keep their hands on their knees, depending on how they're choosing to sit, or in their laps, but somewhere that's not back behind them, because if they're sitting like this, somebody can easily squish those fingers. So you do need to remind them of that. But giving those choices made a big difference in our carpet behavior. And so hopefully it will help your students as well. I will drop the link to these down below. You can grab them either all by them. Well, they come in a pack with these and the voice level chart, which is super important as well. And a how to be how to show your listening poster. So they're all in a pack, but you can also get our visual bundle that has all of those, as well as visual schedules and picture direction cards and all the visuals, because you know how I feel about visuals, <laughs> all the visuals you need in your kindergarten classroom. If you need to get in touch with me, all my contact information is right here. Or just drop a comment down below and I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Until next time, have an exceptional day.